Hello everyone and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards and in this lesson number 154 we'll take a look to see if enterprise service buses ESBs are still relevant today if it's still a thing. Now you can get a listing of all the lessons I do in Software Architecture Monday uh, through my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. Many of the lessons, especially recently in the past couple of years, uh, I've been pulling from material from these two books that I just recently wrote with my friend Neil Ford. But today's topic is going to deviate a little bit from this material because, well, in my journey a couple weeks ago, I was asked this question and I thought it was a really good question. Mark, in, in today's world of modern uh, integration architecture, is an enterprise service bus, an ESB, still a thing? Is it still relevant today and should we be considering it? And I thought it was a really great question. Now I answered the, the question at the time, but I thought, what a great question for a lesson. So let's actually take a look at this question and see if it really is relevant. Because, wow, four and a half years ago, almost four and a half years ago, a uh, little over four years ago, I recorded lesson 39 where I talked about integration hubs and enterprise service buses and whether they were really needed and what the use cases were. Now, if you haven't seen lesson 39, uh, you can either pause this and go and watch it or watch it afterwards because in lesson 39, I really talked about the bottom line use of an enterprise service bus really being to decouple systems and allow each system to evolve independently of other systems as they change. And that was really the context of Lesson 39, and I kind of illustrate all of those pieces. Well, in this lesson, I want to take a little bit of a deeper dive and kind of look at the relevance of some of these capabilities in today's kind of integration architecture. Well, it turns out today, as of yesterday, we still have a lot of systems and applications and, and services everywhere that do need to still communicate. Now, that hasn't changed. And that's the first topic I want to show is really workflow and integration, where in fact, let's say this system on the left right here needs to communicate with all these other systems. Well, the first thing we notice actually is the fact that this particular system right here has to have all the intimate knowledge upon any given business request of what other systems are needed to satisfy that request. And so what happens is the responsibility of that workflow and orchestration is now placed on the burden of the calling system. Whereas, if we use an enterprise service bus to help us with integrating different systems, notice what happens here. Now I've simplified this calling application right here because essentially what I've done is I've moved all that responsibility for the knowledge of which systems need to satisfy that request over to the enterprise service bus. Therefore, not only simplifying this particular system here. But now I don't have to worry about a lot of the complication about the workflow. Um, do things have to be called in a certain order? Um, can I call them asynchronously or synchronously? Um, do I have to call them in serially? Um, what happens if there's an error? All this kind of stuff I'm freed from. I just make a single business request to the enterprise service bus. And this allows me from an enterprise scope to get a level of abstraction. And this is kind of one of the things I showed in Lesson 39. Well, given the fact that we still do communicate between systems, that hasn't changed, let me talk about two primary capabilities of an enterprise service bus and the issues that happen. Um, so the first of these is when we have a system that needs to communicate with others, uh, we have what's called protocol-aware communication which any system that wants to talk to any other system must know its protocol, whether it be simple RESTful calls using HTTP, uh, messaging calls using advanced message queuing protocol, or maybe something like Google's Remote Procedure Call, GRPC. 
In other words, I need to be aware of the calling systems protocol. But one of the interesting things that happen if we form that level of abstraction in an enterprise service bus is now we get what's called protocol agnostic communications. Because what happens, that enterprise service bus now transforms the protocols. I can make a single call using any protocol I want. That goes into the enterprise service bus, which then transforms that protocol into what each service needs. Therefore, again, abstracting that knowledge from each individual system. It also allows me, let's say right here, to maybe change from Google Remote Procedure Call to maybe some sort of other kind of socket level communication. And none of the other systems need to know about that change. And that's, uh, again, that decoupling that the Enterprise Service Bus actually gives us. Well, when we make calls, we do have this protocol agnostic or protocol aware communication. But when I do make a call to another system, I'm either asking for information or sending information to it in the form of a contract. And so one of the other issues with kind of point to point communication like this is contract coupling where, in fact, this system needs to know two things about contracts. The first is the type of contract, whether it's JSON or whether it's XML or maybe even asking for a C-sharp object. But there's another type of coupling that happens as well, because not only do I need to know the type of contract if I'm going to make these calls, but also what kind of data and in what format. For example, take something annoying like dates, <laughs> where this first system on the top requires a date in month, day, year format, common here in the United States, which drives me crazy because it's mixing up a hierarchical order of things. <laughs> Better, in my opinion, is day, month, year. It makes more sense because I'm going from something fine-grained to coarse-grained. Um, but then we get so confused about these things, a lot of times we simply just spell out the date so there's no confusion about which field is the month or the uh, day, let's say. But my point is, this system right here needs to know every time I make a call, I have to transform my own data. And that's a form of contract coupling. Well, this becomes quite an issue in integration architecture. But one of the things that we can address with this issue is using an enterprise service bus to give us contract decoupling. So we get protocol agnostic communication with a decoupled contract. And the first of those forms is message transformation, where I don't care about the format of any other system. I am going to choose to send a stream of bytes. And I'm going to send that stream of bytes to the enterprise service bus. Now, it has the knowledge to know, oh, I have to now convert that over to JSON to call this uh, system, and XML to call this one, and a C-sharp object to invoke this system over here. But there's another form of contract decoupling, and that is message enhancement. Now, message transformation decouples the contract because I don't know the contract type, its structure. Message enhancement deals with the payload, the actual data of that contract. And let's go back to those dates that are really annoying. Well, I'm going to choose to send out a nice hierarchical format of day, month, and year. That goes into the Enterprise Service Bus, which now can transform it into whatever date format is needed by each of those systems. So we really have two things going on here. Abstraction from the protocol, not even knowing what these systems are. Oh, as a matter of fact, let's start from the beginning. Abstraction from what systems are needed for my particular request. I don't even know. Number two, and that was the workflow piece. Number two was what kind of protocol. And number three was what contract is needed. And so let's come back to our question right here. In today's modern world of integration architecture, is an enterprise service bus still relevant? Well, let me answer it by saying all of those things that we talked about, uh, the advantages of that level of abstraction to decouple the systems, 
are very much still relevant today. The orchestration, the workflow control, the protocol uh, awareness or abstraction, as well as the contract abstraction, uh, leads me to believe that yes, all these capabilities included in an enterprise service bus and in the integration hub are still relevant in today's world. Um, we think of these as fairly old things that came out in the 2000s, early 2000s with a SOA, service oriented architecture. But these capabilities are absolutely relevant today. All right, so great question. Thank you for asking that. And uh, this has actually been lesson 154. Is an ESB and enterprise service bus still relevant today? And I gave you at least my bottom line answer. Yeah, they may be old, but they're still relevant today. So stay tuned uh, in two more weeks uh, for another lesson in Software Architecture Monday.